Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Cloud Busters. My name is Mallory Boudreau, and I am your host, and I am once again in this beautiful studio, and I am joined today by Dean Oliver, the FinOps lead at Accenture UK. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Mallory. Today, we have a very exciting topic. So folks, today we're going to be talking about cloud migrations, and specifically, uh, how to be a bit more strategic about them because migrations are ultimately, they're spinning plates. You've got applications still in your data center that will probably be growing in capacity, even while you're migrating other applications out of the data center, leaving some hardware behind. You've got net new moving into the cloud or our cloud first. So you've got a lot of different things to juggle. And if you're not strategic about it, you will miss out on some opportunities to achieve business value. So Dean, you are here to enlighten us on how to think about that and how to approach that a bit more strategically. Now, before we jump into all of that, can you tell us a little bit more about your role at Accenture? Yeah, so in my role at Accenture in FinOps, we've been helping organizations achieve greater transparency and control mm. over their spend on cloud to make sure they achieve the expected value from their investments. Very good. And if we blow that out to more of the macro level, that all really starts in the migration journey to make sure that clients are actually pinning their migration to the business strategy and to the value that they want to achieve sure. from that migration before they get to the cloud. Once they do get to the cloud, they need to make sure they have that continuous control and transparency and mm -hmm. FinOps essentially in place to make sure that they continue to achieve that value and continue to optimize that cloud workload and that state. Yeah, and you've, you've hinted there at some of the challenges, which is you have to zoom out and think about things before they're in the cloud. So let's talk about that now. As organizations are migrating their applications, what challenges do they run into? Yeah, exactly. So what we're typically seeing from Accenture research is one in three organizations aren't seeing their expected value from the cloud investment. Mm -hmm. And the barriers to that are typically down to business enablement, mm -hmm. cost, and speed of the migration that they're trying sure. to go for. Yeah. Okay. And what we're finding because of that is organizations are typically rushing into the migrations and they're not really thinking about exactly what use case they want to enable mm. and which applications in the estate that pins back to and then working with the business on exactly what value they need to achieve from that migration before they set off on the investment. Now, yes, you can get into analysis paralysis and go too far into that and yeah. not move, but you do want to make sure that you've really put the thinking into all of the up and downstream dependencies and made sure that you've got the right set of applications at that macro level agreed before you kick off the migration. So that, that triangle, I think, is a useful way to frame it, the sort of, you said, cost, speed, business enablement, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, it sounds like, so correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like a lot of orgs are trying to optimize for speed, which is to say, just get it out of the data center and into cloud quickly. But is that the most common approach, or are there some other common approaches or even common pitfalls that organizations run into? So in terms of the common approaches, what you really need to think through is three factors. So the first one is around economic value and sure. the principles you look at there, which I'll come to shortly. You then need to look at the technical planning in terms of for each application, make sure you've done the right assessment using the 7R methodology. Mm. And then also, as I mentioned up front, have you got the right foundations in place on the cloud side to make sure you're ready to receive those workloads and you have the right operating model and capabilities in place. So going back to the value and the economic side of things, yeah. what you need to make sure is, first of all, you're taking those collective set of applications you've agreed on mm -hmm. and you're looking at the TCO impact to the on-premise estate. Okay. Exactly which of that on-premise estate you can demise are you timing it and sequencing it right in terms of with end of life kit or with contract renewals and understanding the addressable costs that you can actually take out the on-premise estate so you're not over promising to the business how much of their direct costs will be removed and also the impact to their recharge costs as well in mm -hmm. terms of if you are migrating only 50 percent of that estate the remaining tenants costs will actually increase for their remaining workloads because some of the costs right. aren't actually addressable. Right. So things like that all need to be considered in that TCO impact box. Mm -hmm. 
Then what you need to make sure you're looking at, obviously, is the uptick on the cloud side. How much is it going to mm -hmm. cost to run those applications and workloads in the cloud for the cloud service provider you've chosen? And what would be the ongoing run cost of that workload once you're in the cloud? You've then got the one-off transformation type costs in terms of the implementation and how much it will cost to actually move those workloads and the time scale around that and how long it will take to do that. And collectively across that time scale, you'll then understand from a cost perspective how much it will cost to move to the cloud and how much it will cost in terms of living in the cloud and you'll balance that out with the cost reductions. On the right hand side then, you've got the more strategic benefits. And this is where we need to make sure that organizations are really thinking through the KPIs of those strategic mm. benefits on areas like agility, resilience, and now even more so sustainability in terms of the CO2 reductions. Right, right. Um, Dean, I feel like you've made a big assumption when you describe the TCO of an application on-prem, which is that we need that data in the first place. And so that immediately strikes me as a huge challenge is do you have access to clean visibility in the data center of what the applications are using and how much they're costing? Because otherwise, how will you be able to make that transition into the cloud and do like a proper comparison of before and after? And I, that's not really a question so much as I'm thinking through how difficult that can be when you are a huge multinational with thousands of applications all being used by a distributed workforce. Right, that's a massive data challenge. Exactly, it's hugely important when you're taking those applications mm -hmm. that for data, master data sources like the CMD, CMDB, yeah. that you can pin that application back to the servers it's residing on, the mm -hmm. storage, and work out exactly what impact to that data center you're making. And then you can start to make strategic decisions around how many holes you can wind down in that data center. Mm -hmm. Will it impact the, the majority of that data center? We actually start needing to look at exit planning. And then also from the flip side on the cloud costs, it's hugely important to understand exactly how much that infrastructure is costing from a rate perspective on the on-premise infrastructure side. Mm -hmm. So you can start to try and do a like-for-like -like comparison with the cloud costs and make sure that if you are looking at a cost reduction scenario play to migrate to cloud, that you are actually reducing the cost of running that workload mm -hmm. in the cloud if you're not looking at some of the more strategic KPIs on the right-hand side of that value equation. So this, this is good practical stuff. This is like, okay, what data do we need? How are we measuring the differences? Let's talk more about the KPIs you can look at or other data you might need for this analysis that you haven't mentioned already. So in terms of the other KPIs that you can look at, um, as I mentioned up front, you really do need to look at the recharges to the business and you mm -hmm. need to look at the direct cost reductions and exactly what that means in quantifiable figures that you can take off the bottom line or you can take off the recharges when you're allocating the cost back to the business lines. Mm -hmm. What you also need to look at in that macro level picture is what percentage of the data center you are actually taking out or in terms of licenses, how many licenses are you removing if you're going to move um, those set of applications to the cloud mm -hmm. and completely take out. And then you can start to have conversations with the vendor who provides those licenses to see exactly what that means in cost reductions or mm -hmm. what contract termination costs are going to be included as part of that value equation if you want to con terminate contracts early. Or can you reuse those licenses in cloud depending on what they are? Yeah, good point. Point. Exactly, yeah, and that's where your cloud strategy is important to make sure you've also got a macro level cloud strategy to make those assumptions on where you're actually bringing your own license over or using existing licenses so that you can take that into account on the TCO impact for the on-premise estate too. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking a lot about the, the fixed costs that would go up if you stay in the data center, right? So, you know, all the other applications have left this data center, but there's still one monolithic structure in there all of a sudden that one monolith is responsible for all of the overhead costs. And I, I mean, literally overhead, right? Like the HVAC and the DBAs and all of that. And you reach a point where it's just not tenable to keep one monolithic application in the data center. And it, you have to move it over. And maybe you do that for speed initially just because it doesn't make sense anymore to keep it in there. 
Yeah, exactly. And that's why it's really important that you're not just doing what we call a Swiss cheese approach in <laughs> application migrations and you're just poking good holes. Good to in, eat, not yeah, so good for migrations. Exactly. But if you're poking holes in the data center on one by one applications, you're never going to see when that endpoint is actually going to arise. So you right. need to make sure on the three to five year strategic planning cycles, you're looking at those collection of apps I mentioned up front. And you're also looking at the percentage of the impacts of the remaining data center that's there. And then you can see three, five years in the horizon mm -hmm. when that point's going to emerge and make the bigger decisions around the exit planning or downsizing the data center yeah. and migrating. If you need to keep that workload on premise to a smaller, more manageable data center, that's more cost efficient. Mm -hmm. But unless you do that bigger strategic planning and you don't, the bigger strategic planning, then you will not know when that point emerges by doing it one by one. Right, and instead you'll blame this poor monolith application. Why are you so expensive? Well, it wasn't so expensive until you poked holes in the data center overhead costs by moving things out of there. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. And that's why you need concepts like sweeper crews as well when you migrate in the applications to start to consolidate the data center around the applications you've migrated and start to downsize the halls and make sure mm -hmm. that you've got a more manageable data center and you're not still running um, all of your infrastructure at heavily underutilized against its capacity. I like the visual of the sweeper crew. It's either old school minesweeper or it's um, the, the walkers at the end of a marathon. Like, come on, let's go. We need to close down this route. <laughs> exactly. You've got to do the two hand in hand. You can't just expect to migrate and the data center just downsizes behind you. Someone's also got to keep that in sequence to make sure everything's mm -hmm. running as planned. Mm -hmm. And that's why planning is hugely important. Yeah. Okay. So it's, let's, let's actually shift slightly towards the benefits of the strategic approach because you're starting to hint at it now in terms of fairly allocating costs and not doing the Swiss cheese approach. So talk to us more about the benefits achieved or that you can achieve when you approach it more holistically. So if you approach it more holistically and you tie it back to the business strategy and the business value, then you're going to achieve the aims not just of IT trying to reduce the costs based on a cost reduction play, mm -hmm. but you're going to enable business strategy and you're going to achieve the outcomes collectively for the organization you when go. you do that. But in order to achieve that value, you've got to look in terms of the applications that you're migrating collectively. And are you choosing the right approach for those migrations in mm -hmm. terms of not every application needs to be migrated to the cloud. There is going to be hybrid approaches. Some applications as part of that package you've chose to migrate could just be retired because they're of no use. Mm -hmm. Some could be replaced by purely SaaS applications to reduce the cost and the overhead of managing that application. And others could be re-architected to hugely increase the value from the application or workload and start to leverage cloud native and the cloud services that the right. providers yeah. are offering. Yeah. It's a good point too. Um, you have to stay high level to a certain extent because if you really get down into the weeds on it, you'll wind up saying, you'll, you'll wind up almost on a track that isn't beneficial for all applications, right? You'll just have this sort of like blinders on and you'll be doing something because you've gotten into the habit of it. But when you pull back or zoom out, you know, choose your analogy, and you look at things a little bit bigger, you realize actually this application has the, a lot of potential for value. Let's lean into re-architecting it. This application is important, but it's old legacy. Maybe we can choose a SaaS application instead, something like that. But you have to like constantly challenge yourself not to get too hyper-focused on, on just one path for it. Yeah, exactly. Once you've done that macro level, you do have to zoom in and do the individual migration effort and implementation for that application itself. Sure. And you of may then you. need to refactor the overall plan. But until you've got that overall plan and understood all of the dependencies on the applications and the data that resides around them, then you won't have that full picture yeah. to zoom in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. high and low. Yeah. Stuff. And, and that's what causes the speed problem. It, it actually slows people down if they try and rush into the migration and they want to do it for speed. If they haven't actually thought about the bigger picture, right. they don't get the speed they really wanted to go after in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. There might be a couple of quick wins. Great. Go, go do that. But let's really think about some of these applications because there's a lot of cost implication and a lot of potential, both good and bad. Well, good. Dean, this is fun. Um, what advice, to wrap up, what final advice might you give organizations who are tackling a cloud migration? 
So in terms of final advice, I think I'd say not every migration strategy is the same. It's going to be unique to your organization. It's going to be unique to your business strategy in the UK and the use cases you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And not everything needs to be migrated to the cloud. There will be a hybrid of cloud and on-premise that needs to be stitched together. Yeah. And what most organizations need to think about is once they've moved to cloud, it's an ongoing living ecosystem and it's a new way of working and a new way of innovating, just innovate, creating innovative services mm -hmm. and making sure that you achieve maximum value for the business. So don't just migrate to cloud and park the bus, but then think about how you do the ongoing management of cloud and leverage all the innovative services that the cloud has to offer to make sure you can increase the business value and ultimately the profitability which was probably the point in the first place of leveraging the benefits and services and value that comes out of cloud. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and for your perspective and advice. And thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of Cloudbusters. If you'd like to get in touch, you can reach us at cloudbusters at aptio.com. And you are also welcome to post on our LinkedIn group with any questions or suggestions. Thank you so much, and we'll see you again soon for another episode.